away. Hi. Um, Sia. That doesn't mean Sia, but it means hi in Hungarian. I learned that yesterday. <laughs> um, so I'm Sole Dapenades. Everyone calls me Sole. And I'm super Sole on Twitter. I decided to add it here so everyone knows who I am, which I guess if you want to judge me or whatever, you know who to judge. And I work at Mozilla. You might have heard about Firefox OS. It's present in Hungary, so if you go to Telenor, to a shop in Telenor, you can just go out there and buy a um, phone, so that's cool. We're in 29 countries and 14 global operators like Telenor or Orange uh, or Telefonica. So that means that instead of being this virtual thing that you can go to eBay and buy like this one of those weird Firefox OS phones, you can actually go to a shop and like try them before. So that's that's cool because we did all this thing in just two years, and like uh, we were like, yeah, okay, that this is really cool, but uh, I don't know. Um, writing this whole thing in JavaScript, like this phone is actually fully written in JavaScript, except for the parts that interface with, you know, like the, the, the drivers and everything, which is C, but it ends up being JavaScript. So writing all this thing in JavaScript and dealing with all those telcos, which are weird and want your money and all those things, and we still survive. <laughs> uh, maybe we hung on far enough, so we were like, okay, so how do we go further? And of course, we asked that question, and the answer, like any modern digital agency does nowadays, is we brainstorm. And so we formed like 50 or more groups. There was like this huge list, which I didn't bother counting because it wasn't like an, an order list. So it was 50 or more. And the way it worked was like, you could just like join groups and it wasn't like normative. It would be like, oh, I want to do this, this group to experiment about having more cats in our phones. Or you could say, oh, I want to experiment about these other things. So there were lots of different um, ideas and like, things you wanted to think about, but you hadn't had time. So they, the whole purpose was to stop for a month and generate ideas and like, kind of like leave your brain go for whatever. So some of the ideas were obvious, like one of those is streamline the build system, which is like something like if you've been working on a project for two months, after two months, you want to redo the whole thing. So imagine if you have a project which is two years old, you want to redo whole, the whole of this. And, and the thing is that when Firefox OS was started, there was Bower, there was Require, like Require, the, the, the weird one. Uh, there was NPM, there was many other things, but no one was actually the real package management system winner. So it's because they couldn't really bet on anyone, they made up their own thing using Showrunner with XPC shell, make files, and all sorts of weird things. <laughs> so when we try to teach people Firefox OS two years after, they actually come from the web, and they look at that, and they're like, make files. And they just disappear. <laughs> so we actually need to fix that thing. So that's one of the reasons we wanted to streamline the build system, make it more approachable. Another idea is like, how do you rethink the code structure? Because this is two years after. There are many apps written in JavaScript, and each one is written a different way, and new contributors like might learn how to use one or how to hack on one app, but then go to the other one, and they're like, this is so different. I don't know how to, I need to relearn the whole thing. And there was another thing which is deliver more polish. When Firefox was started, there wasn't any web workers. WebGL wasn't as stable as it is right now. There wasn't any service worker. So many things were done the old way. And we know that we can do things way more polish nowadays, but we are not doing that yet. So one of the ideas was like, well, let's do this thing now. So that was, that was all very sensible. But of course, I'm not a sensible person, and I'm into the riskier ideas. So one of the ideas I like was, how do you rethink smartphones so they are actually smart, and instead of being this dumb phone, which is inter interrupting you all the time to let you know that you have notifications? Or this one, which is really cool. Suppose you have a family with five members, and one of them, which is like the rich one, has a proper contract plan, and the other ones are just using pay as you go. Why do everyone have to download the system update? Why can't just the contract person download the system update and then send it and share it with all the other phones? Because all of them are using Wi-Fi. So this is the kind of ideas that are really interesting. And for people that are in the first world, as we are, it's like, why would you want to do that thing? Just go and download it. But for people who are in a place where connectivity is really poor, this is really cool. So this kind of idea is like, okay, we have these devices that can do all these things. Why are we not doing this? 
So that's, that was something that was really, really exciting. And also, how can you have context-aware phones, phones that react and use the sensors to be, again, more intelligent, way more intelligent than they are right now? So this is really interesting. But the one I really liked was the peer-to-peer -peer web. And this doesn't have anything to do with pirating movies or music or anything like that. But it's about dropping the web and surfing locally. That means that we should connect to devices we have around. And our phones are super aware of, are super, super capable of doing those things. We are not doing that right now. Like today, when you want to send data between devices, you often have to send them to the cloud and then come back. And even when those devices are like physically close, as is the case here. And this is stupid or nonsense or however you want to describe that. But of course, that's a business model for many companies that they love to see what you're doing. They love to look at your data and do things. I don't know which kind of things. And actually, Mozilla has no interest in doing that kind of thing. So we're in a good position to actually empower you to control your data. So I was like, well, we actually can do this thing because other people can't because they're investors or they're, um, you know, like the important people are going to say, no way you're going to give people ability to not to show us what they are doing. So I kept looking at the web, like the peer-to-peer -peer prototypes, and I was like, okay, there is this thing where people are sharing files between phones and like they're sending pictures of their daughter, and it's like, that picture is not going anywhere else other than the ad hoc network they just created with Wi-Fi Direct. So this is really cool. Like Dropbox is not seeing those pictures. This is as private as it can get. And then there was also another version where someone would be running a Sega Mega Drive emulator running in JavaScript in a phone, and then it would be sending the frames to another phone or all over like peer-to-peer, -peer, and they could be playing columns one against the other. And Again, this was a running JavaScript. And then there was this other one where you could just discover devices with this protocol called Wi-Fi Direct. And you can just like find things around. You don't even need to set up the network. And that's what they use in Japan and Taipei for configuring uh, TVs and that kind of devices. So it's like, wow, this is all JavaScript. And this is all running on phones, which means that it makes programming things for phone really approachable. You don't have to learn, uh, you know, like Java or Objective-C. And I, of course, I'm a tinkerer, and of course I wanted, I was so excited, and I was like, I want to tinker and make cool stuff, and I want to make it right now. But for once, I was a little bit sensible, and I was like, okay, stop and think what you want to do, because otherwise you're going to like start doing things, but nothing will make sense. So I was like, okay. So peer-to-peer -peer stuff is very social, and this is going to be a huge challenge for me, because I'm, I tend to do things which are really anti-social. Like things are like just one person playing with some music or whatever, but that's it. So we'll be like, okay, I need to learn how to do things where more people can play. And then there's also this thing where people say, oh, JavaScript is this toy language where you cannot do anything serious with JavaScript. And it's like, well, this is another challenge. Let's show them that we can actually do something serious with JavaScript. And then finally, if you know me, you know that I don't like, I love music. So I kind of like joined the whole things together. I was like, okay, so what about musical toys? Well, if I can just build something that can run on phones and it's musical and it's social as well, and we are not going to need the internet. Once we have this thing, we don't need to be connected to anywhere to play. This is not like playing a PS3 or PS4 that you need to download three gigs before you can get to the menu. Um, and if we do this thing right with service workers and that kind of thing, you can even keep the toys afterwards. So we are kind of like multiplying the resources. And this was super, super, super cool. I was super excited. Um, so I was like, okay, we are going to make a band. This is going to be better than laptop musicians. We are going to be the disconnected ensemble. So I'm kind of like recruiting people on each of these iterations. So today we're going to have a friend which is waiting here. Um, because bands are more than one person, so it has to be social. So the question is, how do we make this thing happen? And there is a plan, of course. And the first one is we make the musical toys, then we put them on a device, then we make them available to other devices, and then we play music and have fun. So that's four easy steps. So the first one is making the musical toys. And we are going to go like super modular here and super splitting things around. So each toy is actually two parts. The first one is a web audio based audio node. So all the music side is, ba is built in just one module. And the web component based UI, which is all the things we see. 
So the web audio notes, I don't know if you know about web audio, but web audio is really modular. It's about having this number of sources of sound, and you can connect them to other boxes that can filter, modify the sources of sound. You can like ending up like sending all these things to this kind of sync, which is actually called the destination. So this is kind of like this stream that ends up in the destination, which is actually the speakers. And this is really, really good for making toys because we can just do one of those boxes and connect it to existing things and we can reuse code, which is really, really neat. So as I say, one toy is going to be one audio node and I'm basing this on the open music pattern, which is another project I'm working on. And the idea is that you take an audio context, which is kind of like the equivalent in web audio node to canvas context. So that gives you tools and methods. And it will return you an audio node, and you can just connect it to anything in the graph. So in this case, for example, I've got this theremin, and I'm using Browserify, so everything is like node. And I'm using, I'm requiring that. I create the audio context. Then I create a new theremin with this thing. And then it's just JavaScript objects. I can just say start or change the properties, and like that kind of thing. So that's pretty natural. Um, and then for the web component UI, I know web components are confusing and like very esoteric, but essentially um, this is something that really works well with representing UI things. And since audio nodes have these properties and these uh, events that they emit, we just need to build a, build a custom element that represents this particular component. And, and that, that's all we need. So custom elements, if you haven't gone into web components, this is a part that lets you define, it lets you define new types of DOM elements so the browser knows about this new thing. And just as you can do a new, you can do create element table, you can also say create element open music theremin UI. So this is something I just taught, taught the browser and the browser knows how to do that thing. And once you got the element, you can append it, you can append it to the body or do any other thing you would do with um, an HTML element. The only special thing here is the attach to method, which is my kind of own convention. And you would see that I'm attaching that to the theory node, which is the web audio thing we created before. And we're doing this thing so that uh, we set up the listeners on, on events on the audio node. Like, suppose you have a, a node which is playing a sample, you need to know when that thing is finished. So you can play, you can activate the play button again. And then you can also add listeners for events on the interface. So if you play, so if you press play, that thing gets to play again. So you need to get everything in sync. So that's about what you need actually to do. And the other good thing is because both things are not, like you are writing one thing without actually depending on the other. And if you are better at UI programming than me, which is super easy because I'm really bad at that, you can write a better UI element and just replace it and you just attach your UI element to my audio node. Or if you have an audio node which is pretty similar, you can just attach this UI to another audio node and use the same interface. So that's really, really cool. Or you could just use the audio node somewhere else. Like you don't really, really even need to use the UI. You can just like program everything because this is just a JavaScript object. And that's how I'm actually writing the tests. Like making sure that things work. I don't even have the UI yet. I just send properties and that's how I make sure that it works. Um, so this is not too peer to peer at all. This is just normal code that works in any modern, modern browser, which is good because that means that we can play in as many devices as we want. So the second step is putting the toys in a device and we have code that works everywhere. So we just make a static website, like something like this. And then that's it. That's all we need because we actually don't need any peer to peer stuff here. We just need to put things in a way that we can transmit the data and we don't want to reinvent the wheel for this. So for making the toys available, we have a website. What do we do with websites? We put them on servers. <laughs> so we need a server. And the sad thing, or the good thing, is that we cannot build a server on a normal browser. But Firefox OS apps have superpowers. And the superpower we need is the TCP socket, which is what the HTTP protocol or the servers uh, are built on. So what about we bundle a website in, on the web server into a Firefox OS app. So that's a zip file that we can just like push it and so it's offline. And we install it on the master device, which is going to be a Nexus 4, which is flush with Firefox OS. And that should be it. And the good thing is that someone uh, had actually written a web server, so I didn't have to do it myself. <laughs> I can just use it. And the way you use it is pretty like node-like. You just require that, then create an instance, and then start it. And this is the port we're using, the 80. 
but this web server would accept requests, but wouldn't reply to them because we haven't set up any listener or anything. So we need to respond to the requests. And the way we do it is to just add an event listener and just request, and that's it. And how you process the request, it's up to you because the server is not dictating what you want to do. But it doesn't even know how to parse the logic, I mean the routes or whatever you're sending it, so we need to do it ourselves. Um, so what we are actually wanted to do, we want to just serve static content. So that means like if you request a directory, we are just uh, sending you index HTML. That means if you request something that ends with a slash, this is a directory in like HTML terms. And likewise, if you request a file, you need to res like serve the contents of that file. So it's like if that thing doesn't end with a slash, so that's, that's pretty easy. And, but actually, before we send anything, we need to tell the, the browser on the other side, like, hey, I'm going to send you this thing, which is this content type. Otherwise, you will get weird results. So we need to find the, what, what's the content type of the thing we're serving. And I'm using this super easy thing, which is like, I'm using this extension. So if you are requesting something that ends with HTML, I'm just going to say, this is text HTML. And likewise, TPG is image JPG. This is naive, but it works. So. Just use the simple thing that works. Um, and for actually serving, we just say, okay, this is the headers in the response we have from before, uh, which is the function we just made, and we just use the utility method from the server, which is send file. And actually what this thing is doing is it does um, an HTML HTTP request to the server app, because this is all JavaScript, as I said, Firefox OS is all written with JavaScript, and once you get the contents, it sends the response to the other browser. It's kind of like this super hack that actually works. Um, so for connecting to the server, you need to find the IP. And one way of finding the IP is you go to the phone and go to settings, Wi-Fi, available networks, current network, and then you tap again, and you find the IP address. But that's kind of like, meh. But you could actually use the most Wi-Fi manager, which is another API you can only access in Firefox OS. So with that um, API, you can access interesting import important information that you need to show in the screen. So you can find the uh, IP address and the name of the network. And it's also interesting to see the A status of the network, because sometimes it's disconnected or trying to connect, so your thing is not really available yet. So that's the things that we're going to show in the server. So when I start the server, I will just see that thing, and I can like look at that from my other phone and just like type in the IP address. And that's how you end up with from this IP address to this other phone that gets this thing served to it. But that's cool. We have the thing. It works. But you know, like typing IP addresses is not my idea of fun. Like it's like it's slow. Like. I know. Even typing that thing in a computer is like, you know, like numbers. And because I'm not an English native, if someone dictates me the numbers, I cannot really remember. So I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Can, can you just say this thing is slower because I can't really remember? So this is like, I don't want to be typing in addresses. So there was a way that you could reduce this friction, and the way is NFC. And what NFC means is near field communication. It's this thing that people don't really know how to use for. Um, so it lets you transmit small pieces of data between devices. And what people usually use it is to send you contact data. Like, that's weird. I don't want to send to, to get my phone to touch some other people who I don't know. Phone is like, yeah. Um, so the thing is that NFC-enabled devices, when they get the URL, they navigate to that URL. Uh, so when you send a small, one of those small pieces of data, you can say, this thing I'm sending you is a URL. So if you tap, that, that phone is going to say, oh, you're sending me a URL. I'm just going to open this thing. And actually, Firefox OS apps can control the web NFC, so they can actually send you things. So I thought, well, let's add this new feature to this web server, which is running on this phone. So this phone is becoming a web server that also sends you URLs when this device touches me. So we will need to type, and that's really cool. So the support again, is, 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 this is narrowing now. Like we are having support to, in NFC in Firefox OS, Android. Somebody told me in Windows one. I don't know because I've never used one. Um, An iPhone 6 Plus could work, but Apple are keeping the chip to themselves for payments. So I don't know, Apple, Apple, I don't know. Um, so I think it's now the time for the demos, and that's when I'm going to call my friend. <laughs> And we're going to try and show you what we have right now. So I guess we need to see the camera right now. Um, cool. cool.
Cool. So this is this web server. I don't know if you can see this thing. Uh, here's the IP address of the server. There are they all the three phones are connected to the network, which is on my other phone. <laughs> so I, I have a, a hotspot running here, so I didn't need to depend on the Wi-Fi network here. And this is the messages because I've been trying this thing before, and this is all the things that I'm replying, like responding to people. So we're going to try and see if we can have this thing working. So maybe you should show the screen, show it here. Yeah. So and hopefully, when I bump it, he will get the. You, yes, you went. Wow. So he's getting the, the choose, he can choose, and he's going to choose the theremin because this is like a theremin. <laughs> this is like this weird instrument from the 50s, and you can maybe play with it. <laughs> and yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'm going to try and do the same thing and pray it works. Okay, cool. Yesterday in the hotel, everything broke, and I thought it was going to be a disaster. Um, okay, there we go. So I'm going to control a drum machine if it wants to work. Okay, cool. Uh, so this is where the disco party starts. Okay, we are going to remove this thing so it's more progressive and more like step by step. Okay, are you ready for this? Yeah, let's party. Are you going to MC as well? Oh, no, I'm not <laughs> much of a rapper. Okay, okay, so. okay, okay, there we go. There we go. Maybe faster is better. This is, this is <laughs> okay, I don't think it's working. Truth be told, this is the first time we play together, so I think. <laughs> um, it's thank you. <laughs> it's it's really cool. Uh, yesterday, essentially, this thing kind of got confused, and it, instead of sending me musical instruments, it sent me GIFs of cats. And then I, I installed that thing, and this thing and also went out, and nothing worked, and I was like giving away, like, I was like, ah, nothing works. Um, so, yeah, so that was it. Um, this is the current state, and can I go back? Yes, thank you. Um, so, of course, this is not done by any means. I think that something's not working well when you connect headphones and it kind of goes slower, so that's weird. And I've got like, my next step is to be able to control like the BPM in all the devices using web sockets, so I can slow down everyone at the same time. And I want to do more toys, and it, obviously with a theremin you can't really go that far. <laughs> And also, I need to implement service workers and cash so people can actually keep their toys and keep playing when I leave with my master device. And also, it might be interesting to share and store the, the presets. So if, uh, like the framing, you can only change the octaves, but other instruments might have more complex presets, so it might be interesting to share the good ones with people. And also, in the future, right now it doesn't really work too well, but you should be able to, like, not actually need to have this fire spot and set everything up, which I had to do before when you were having coffee. In the future, you should be able to do this thing automatically with more of those peer-to-peer -peer APIs. And maybe we want to also send the input events, so we record everything, and we upload it to Bandcamp and get rich. Isn't that cool? And so also, that thing which is also interesting is we should be able to connect to the master device automatically instead of having to do this manual thing. But right now there's a limitation in Firefox where you can only set two network, like one device to another device right now instead of one device to multiple devices. So right now it's not working and that's why I need to use the hotspot. Or maybe using UDP sockets with open source control and sending things to MIDI devices. So I mean, I've got more things, like this is not the only stuff I've got. So it would be nice to control everything with JavaScript. And I don't know, I might have more ideas. And so, if you want to hack on this, or are curious, or whatever, just talk to me, or don't talk to me, just use bits and pieces, everything is in GitHub, or use everything if you want to. Like, if you want to be a, an artist with this, I'm super happy about that. 
All I'm saying, in other words, is do whatever you want, because this is the web, and you should be able to do whatever you want. No one should be telling you what to do or what not to do. And so I'm collecting resources and things on peer-to-peer -peer APIs on this repository. And thanks. <laughs> time. Um, I didn't see any questions on Twitter. Cool. And I'm surprised because my first question is, how can I join the band? How, oh, <laughs> you just need a device. I can't I really just need play to bump. anything though, so I don't know if I'm a good. That's candidate. fine. I don't know if you want to ban it. With Everyone me. is invited. Okay. Yep. Cool. Great. No, I'm happy. Uh, questions, please. Can't see anyone. Oh, there's a question over there in the front second row. So thanks for the inspiring uh, <laughs> presentation. Uh, it was uh, indeed quite fascinating. Uh, I wasn't too impressed yet with your uh, setup with all those wires and mixers and that kind yeah. of stuff. Uh, do you imagine would it be possible to somehow uh, transmit also the audio data back to the master device uh, somehow in sync so that, uh, that could you could uh, only use the master device uh, audio output hmm. to get a uh, result. That could be possible using WebRTC probably, but I had to use a hack. This is a physical hack right now. <laughs> yeah, in the future, I would like to not to have all those wires. It's really inconvenient, especially when you travel. People are like, wow. <laughs> Yeah, it would be kind of like more uh, more impressive that way, but I, yeah. I doubt if it if that's kind of possible to transmit the data fast enough to mm -hmm. get it. We should be able to connect the output sync. of the thing to a stream and just send it with the More questions. Maybe someone upstairs. No, <laughs> can't see anyone. Come on. No? Yeah, there's a question over there. Cool. Um, could you do um, anything in the part of the discovery of the other devices with, with web RTC data channels? Or, or I guess you still have to have a web server? Or? I don't understand the question. Uh, Web RTC allows you peer-to-peer -peer communication, yep. but, but uh, could you use that instead of the, um, the TCP web server on, on the Firefox phone? You could, but you need to establish a way to start communication. Yeah. So the server, it's a natural thing. Like, if I wanted to do that thing, I would need to find a way to uh, send the data and parse it and everything. Why not just use a web server? Yeah. So yeah. the good thing is that the way if other devices don't support the whole web RTC thing, it and not still all, works. And not all devices support NFC. I can, if you do audio stuff... You, you can could, use an IP address. Or you could maybe do uh, modem, analog modem sounds and, and the other phones... Yeah, you could. <laughs> Get it. Yeah, that would be <laughs> But then you don't have time to write the music things, so you have to choose. You yeah. need to choose something. Yeah. OK. One more. Yay, there it is. Where? Oh, there we go. Hi, thanks for the presentation. It was really <laughs> nice and in, in inspiring. That's but, um, really kind. <laughs> <laughs> so if I want to hack on this, how can I do it? Do I need a Firefox OS phone for this, or...? You actually don't need... Well, yeah, you need... If you want to have the server that sends you things, but the app and all the things don't really need anything specific. Like, I'm actually developing in the browser, and I try everything in the browser, and... Like, you can hack on individual things. That's if you want to have the whole thing of having the server running on the phone and everything, but you don't need that if you don't want to be portable. <laughs> I can see a question right there, so we're going to roll with it. <laughs> Hello. 
Do you think you could do live performances with it? Do, do you think there is enough performance in these devices to do like multiple sounds and generate this in real time? So, uh, do you think there is? Yeah, this, well, that's, that's the whole point. Having yeah. a way to just go somewhere and say like, let's go yeah. play music. And cool. If it doesn't crash, which right now it does a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Awesome. I guess we're done with questions, but that was absolutely amazing, and I hope everyone is excited about making music with hardware. I am, but I suck at music, so That's I don't know fine. if I'm... Okay, I'm but <laughs> now I'm in a band, so I don't know how that will work out. We'll see. Uh, thank you, Zola. It's okay.